Greetings, my name is Mr. Braun. I will be teaching your child this year in Technology 8. Um, just a little bit about me, I've been teaching in the district since 2009. I have taught at Unionvale, I've taught at the high school, I've taught here, I even student taught at AMS, so I have a very good understanding of not only the courses I teach in the department, but the courses everyone teaches in the department. So if your child at any point is interested in moving on and taking other courses beyond technology in eighth grade, I can advise them on how to do that. Or if you would be curious, uh, feel free to call. Now, what's going on in Technology 8? Uh, for the most part, everything's happening in Google Classroom. Uh, there's different software we will be using, but everything's posted to Google Classroom. Like at the time of recording this video, uh, we are doing our robotics unit, so uh, I'm going through some of the robotics problems here. But by the time you're seeing this, we will possibly have moved past that. So what I'm going to go over for you guys is just a general course outline, tell you a little bit about it, what we're doing, and the best ways to get into contact with me. So we are a Project Lead the Way affiliated school. We're going to be doing Project Lead the Way curriculum, uh, as well as some traditional CTE curriculum to help better uh, engage the student's understanding of what is offered at the high school. So the first units we do are automation and robotics in eighth grade. At least that's the first unit we're doing this year in my course, uh, where they explore programming, uh, using robots, and how to do things like flow charting, troubleshooting, all interesting uh, things of that nature. Then we'll be moving on to design and modeling, where we're going to do some computer graphics work in Fusion 360. Uh, they will be learning how to draw in a CAD software, and then hopefully we will take those models and we will actually be able to build them. And then finally, we will be building some kind of Rube Goldberg machine in the science and technology unit. How that's going to look right now uh, depends on time and space uh, restrictions. Uh, so I usually wait until I get closer, see what I'm doing with my other courses, because I also teach seventh grade seeing how much room we have in the shop will dictate uh, how big or small their projects are, but they will be doing a Rube Goldberg machine at some point. In terms of instructional methodology and everything, this is a very hands-on course. Uh, we deal with a lot of problem solving. There's a lot of getting things wrong, which is good. Uh, and then after you get them wrong, we try to learn from them and improve. Uh, the more iterations you do, the better you understand. So I, I tell the students all the time, don't worry about getting things wrong. It's okay, you can do it again. Uh, in terms of my grading policy, there's only one grading category, and all the assignments, projects, tests, everything goes in that category, and they're just worth points. So if I have a big project, like later in the year, we're going to build a game called Shut the Box. It's going to take two or three weeks. That's going to be a big project. It's going to get a major project grade. It's going to be worth like 200 points. Minor projects, these are things that take a week. You know, the last robotics problem we might do might be a big problem. It might take a while to do, flow chart out, write out. That might take like four or five days. That might be worth 100 points. But most of the work we're going to do in here are one or two day assignments. One or two day assignments are going to be worth like 10 to 25 points. Uh, at the end of the marking period, you have all the points you could have earned, and you have all the points you did earn. You, all, you add up all the points you did earn and you divide by the points you could have earned and multiply by 100 and that will give you your average in the course. So I try to keep that part simple. In terms of redoing work and resubmitting work, any assignment your child hands in on time, I allow them to redo within reason. Like if I have an assignment due the last day of the marking period, I can't do anything to help them there. I try to avoid that. But anything they hand in on time, I let them redo for full credit. And they can redo it as many times as they want for full credit. Now, there are limits to, to this. You have to get it redone within five or ten class days of when it was originally due. Uh, because I do not like having to go back and dig out answer keys and everything for work from the first two weeks of the marking period, the last two weeks of the marking period. Uh, but I do try to be pretty flexible because I think the work I give is important. and students should try to do it and try to understand it. And if that means they got to do it two or three times, more than willing to give them full credit if they're willing to do it two or three times. Uh, 
it's just a matter of them doing that. If you hand in work late though, I need a good reason to allow you to redo it. Uh, so usually I tell students, if you're gonna hand in late and you don't have a good reason, make sure you're taking your time and getting it correct. Because uh, I do not like to allow redos when work is handed in late. In terms of late work, I do take off 5% a school day every day they're late, uh, up to the point where they get to 50%. So your student can always get 50% on an assignment, even if they hand in the last day of the marking period. But they do have to do it. And then obviously with academic honesty, I don't want uh, your student to cheat, do anything against the code of conduct. So that is a brief overview of the course, how I grade, how I, how I do the work. Um, if you have any questions for me or anything, the best way to contact me is to email me. I am 100 totally okay with you uh, calling, but I find that doing the email is much easier for me to get in contact with you and set up a time. So instead of trying to do a phone tag or something, if you wanna like talk on the phone, uh, shoot me an email at this address uh, and I will respond and give you some possible times when I can call you back and I'll call you within that time frame. Uh, and then we can talk about how your child is doing or whatever, or if you just wanna do it over uh, email, that is also okay with me. So if you do have any questions, concerns, uh, feel free to, to reach out. Once again, I'm putting mostly everything on Google Classroom, so you should be seeing if you go on your child's Google Classroom updates as they come. If you have questions about an assignment or how they got a grade or whatever, feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to get back to you. Uh, hopefully it'll be a good year for your student and I. Uh, I will possibly talk to you soon. Have a good night.